So you can see, you can see all the, uh, you can see all the solar glazing, the south-facing glazing. Um, you, you can now see the, 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 the second-story windows are called clear-story windows that allow the sun to penetrate much deeper into the, into the house. Uh, so, it, so it heats the slab you know, much further into the house. And you see the, you see the fixed overhangs um, that shade the, uh, on, <coughs> so it's an interesting, Interesting design design uh, decision as to how to how to how to size those overhangs. So if it couldn't have come out further. Well, I mean, you can make them you can make them come out as, as far as you want, but you know, so it's it's a yeah you know, it's a trade well it's a trade off between the aesthetics and and shade. And so again, the rule of thumb was to size them so that the the whole window. The south-facing window is fully shaded at solar noon on June the 21st, the summer solstice. You know when the sun is the is the highest in the sky. Well, <clears throat> you know I was think June is not the hottest month here. Actually, July is the hottest month, and so I size these to, to fully shade the the window at solar noon on July the 21st. And I'm really, really, really glad that I, you know, that I that I did that. So the story on the two attached greenhouses is, is an interesting story. Um, um, an architect in Tennessee named Lee Porter Butler um, uh, just liked greenhouses, and, he, and he, he built a house, his own house, and he just he attached the greenhouse to it. Um, and it just so happened that the way that he built the house, that you know greenhouses overheat, and that's why they have the vents, the vents in them. Well, right. Well, rather than, you know, but he didn't design a vent into it, so that the, the overheating just passively went into the main part of his house and, and, and heated his house. And uh, so that was the concept. That was the, that was the concept here. Um, in the summer, can you turn off those vents? Uh, <laughs> there's, there's no, well, now, if you look, my, 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 I actually don't have vents. I, I, I have sliding, uh, sliding glass doors. On the, on the inside of the house, and that's how I can open and, and close them. So um, that's basically, um, so you can, see the, you can see the fixed louvers. It's a five-sided house, and, and uh, so the, the, the cupola there actually, re, actually reflects the floor plan of the, of the house, so there's, there's louvers on two sides on the, on the back side. Is that side. an innovative Brooklyn uh, product? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, that is uh, that is an interim roofing pro project uh, product, and until uh, that's a thirty-year roof, and uh, it's obviously not a cool roof, and uh, that's one of the reasons why I haven't put uh, uh, you can't you can't see, uh, but well you can see this plumbing stub stub out here. Uh, I've I've, I've pre-plumbed it for solar hot water, and uh, but I haven't put it up. For two reasons: one, these these tall eucalyptus trees here. Uh, well, they they actually belong to the neighbor. There 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 were three more trees that that I found were on my property that I've I've taken down, and they've been they've been a, a continual source of of controversy between the neighbor and I. But uh, I'm I'm slowly slowly. Uh, Making making amends, and I'm I'm hoping that I can uh, someday convince her to to let me take them down. So that's another right right. <laughs> that's that's what I should do. Yeah. No, you're right. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. You're right. So um, I think yes. Now, we live in a pretty mild climate here. Yes. We don't have extreme heat or cold. How would this house perform, like in the Midwest, where they have extreme heat and cold? The concept works well, assuming that you have uh, a good site, you have solar access, unimpeded uh, solar and access. Trees, yeah. um, there's a, um, probably the best example, or one of the best examples, um, the Rocky Mountain Institute, which is... Um, the offices uh, of a guy named Amory Lovins, yeah. and uh, he's built a solar passive house uh, up, you know, 8,000, 9,000 feet, 
that's um, totally, I think it's totally heated, you know, by the sun. He, he actually has a, he actually has a, a greenhouse in it that he, where he grows tropical veg, vegetables in it. Where do you go clip the trees with uh, microwave phone towers, <laughs> cell phone towers, and charge the phone company half a million dollars to put the fake tree and make it look like a tree? Now, those so, are the kind of innovative uh, uh, <laughs> ideas. So, so one of the things that, I would, that I'd like to come out of this meeting, um, I don't know whether you have a formal way of, 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 of interacting uh, and, 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 and getting feedback with, you know, innovative ideas, but... Um, uh, I would love to. I'd, I'd love to talk with anybody, either either now or you know. Um, I, there's a bunch of my business cards in there. If if you if you have have an idea about you know passive solar or the passive uh, house concept, or um, we actually haven't talked about um, this is just one small aspect of green building. Uh, I'm a green building uh, raider. I, I certify green buildings and. Um, this is a movement um, in the Bay Area that uh, is it's a growing movement. There's probably, I would bet, what would you say, a third of the cities in the Bay Area now? Maybe not that many, maybe 20, 20, 20 um, <laughs> there's, there's a number of communities that have passed green building ordinances that, that require as part of the building process that you incorporate a minimal le level of green building. And we're not only talking about energy efficiency, we're talking about water efficiency, we're talking about resource uh, materials efficiency, we're talking about indoor air quality. And um, so uh, um, there's actually a new, uh, this year there's a new state uh, Cal Green building code that is also requiring a minimal level. And uh, so it's, 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 it's a, it's a uh, it's a growing trend, and if any of you if you, any of you are thinking of of building in in Palo Alto and Los Altos, Los Altos Hills, um, San Mateo, San Mateo County, uh, San Jose, uh, you're going to be required to uh, uh, to you know to implement a green green building, and in the greenhouse there. I have uh, I have some some manuals and a checklist from this program. It's called Greenpoint Rated, and that, that's what I do. So if you're interested in seeing the, there's probably about 120 different uh, green building measures that uh, you, you can basically pick and choose, but you have to come up with a certain number of points, uh, you know, to meet that. So would you say a regional metamorphosis is going on? I would say that. Yes. <laughs> yes, I would. Good. Yeah. It started in the North Bay. And uh, it moved to the to the South Bay and then San Francisco, and it's it's slowly the the group that I work for actually is in Berkeley, but um, I don't think Georgia. Are there any are there any East Bay uh, municipalities that yeah, require? Oakland just instituted it as, as of the start of the year um, green point for lead requirements. What about Santa Cruz? Santa Cruz has their own has their own version. They decided. That, yeah, they decided. That, they they didn't want to take advantage of all this work that, but they do have a comparable green building. And Berkeley doesn't have. Right, right. So, you know, go figure. I mean, but some of the people here are part of this in, uh, regional metamorphosis initiative. So uh, some of the people who are here right now are sort of looking at this. What what has to change around here in order for us to become sustainable? This uh -huh. is an example. Of that. Uh -huh. Good, good. I'd like to learn more about this. He's the guy that talked about that. That's the guy, okay. Yeah.